Hey, what's up? Today we're gonna go over the seven best questions you should ask women if you are socially awkward. If this is someone that maybe you're on a first date with or you just met for the first time, I'm gonna help you out. A lot of times, awkward guys, they get anxious, they get nervous, they start panicking. We're gonna delete all of that because you're gonna be prepared with these seven questions. Let's get started. Hey, what's up? My name is Payam. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I usually help socially awkward men connect with more people and find a meaningful relationship. In today's video, we're gonna go over seven questions to do just that. So question number one, a lot of times people, when they're on the first date, when they're meeting someone new for the first time, they ask a very boring question. You know what it is. What do you do? So boring. It's played out. Instead, ask this. What does a typical day look like for you? It's just a lot more fun. It's a more of a playful question. You get a better look into her world, into her daily life, if you will, with this question. Again, what does a typical day look like for you? Right? She can be playful with the question. She can tell you about what she does in the morning, at night, so on and so forth. I typically find that people get just turned off with the question, what do you do? It's so played out. I know it's part of like how we get to know people, even in networking circumstances, aside from romantic occasions, but it's just boring. All right, now your goal is to not be boring. Your goal is to not have the vibe drop off, to have her engaged, for you to feel comfortable, right? Well, this is gonna take a lot of the pressure off of you from having to think about what to say, because when you ask this question, it's actually a question that takes a little bit longer to answer. Make sense? That's question number one. All right, question number two is, what are you most passionate about? Okay, now again, a lot of people will ask a more boring version of that question. What do you think it is? What are your hobbies? <laughs> okay, it's not like that's a bad question. I'm not saying that any of these suggestions that I'm giving you, these are just based on my own personal experience from men that I've talked to as well. But what are your hobbies? It's just so, it's just another boring question. That's just a reality situation. But when you ask, what are you passionate about? You're really asking, what do you love, right? And when you ask this, you really get an inside look into, well, what does this person value? Where do they spend their time? Where do they spend their money, right? And it's an exciting question to answer because who wouldn't want to talk about their passions? If you ask me about soccer, for example, which is a huge passion of mine, I could talk about it for days or making videos or whatever, right? So my point is you want to create a positive synergy with the person you're speaking with, right? She's gonna associate you with positivity when you ask a question that makes her feel good. Asking what her passions are and digging deeper into her passions, that's a no brainer. That's question number two. All right, question number three is, who is someone that inspires you? Okay, now the reason I really like this is you get to see who is this person aspiring to be. Now we all have heroes, role models, what have you, people that you aspire to be, people that maybe inspire you. And when you ask this, you're kind of seeing like, all right, well, who does this person eventually want to be in the future? Again, this is another playful question. It's not boring. It's not typical. It's not routine. Ask this question and what you'll find is that you're going to like it she's gonna like answering it. It's a playful question. Remember, these type of questions you wanna ask on a first, second, third date, right? These dates are light, they're easy going. They're not intended to be serious conversations. So you wanna ask as many of these playful questions as possible, and this is one of them. Hey, by the way, if you're enjoying this content so far, you like this style of advice, you like these questions and the way that I'm presenting them, do me a favor, hit subscribe, hit that big thumbs up button so I know you like this. Let me know in the comments as well if there's any other situations or questions that you think may be helpful. Otherwise, let's go to question number four. Question number four is, what is the most exciting thing you've done this current year? Okay, now the reason why I really like this is this helps you gauge compatibility. Because if they say, oh, I haven't really done much, I've just been at school and studying, and you're a daredevil who likes to go snowboarding every other weekend with your GoPro, for example. I mean, <laughs> yeah, maybe you guys aren't compatible. It's almost a loophole in a sense of finding out whether you're compatible by asking them what's the most exciting thing you've done this current year. Now, obviously, if it's January or February and you're watching this video, then you can rephrase that to what is the most exciting thing you did last year, the previous year. But if it's this year and we're at least, let's say, five, six months in, I think this is a great question to ask because it helps you gauge compatibility. It helps you know whether there's long-term potential 
with you and with her, right? Because your goal watching this video is to feel more comfortable, feel more at ease when you have conversations to ideally find a partner that you connect with, your best friend, right? So asking this helps you determine that, it helps you lock in a little bit more and, and feel more comfortable about, okay, this prospect seems like there's real potential here. Make sense? All right, question number five is, what are your favorite ways to spend time on the weekends? Okay, this is a great question again, in terms of gauging compatibility, because you're not asking them, what do you like to do? Boring, you're asking them, how do you like to spend your time on the weekends? Usually people gravitate towards what they love doing on the weekends, right? Whether that's going to the beach, spending time with friends, reading, going to the clubs, dinners, what have you. You're finding out, do your weekends, match again i'm not asking you to go find your fucking twin i'm not telling you to do that what i'm saying is you know opposites attract we we both know this but your goal here is to feel comfortable and when you're prepared with some of these quality questions you will be more comfortable and as a byproduct by asking these quality questions you're finding out whether this person is really a true match for you so you're almost saving her time and saving you time in the process everybody wins make sense question number six i really like this question specifically because it's more of a growth mindset question which i'm really big on and if you're watching this my guess is you're somebody that likes to learn you want to improve you're into self-development and it's this what is the best piece of advice you ever received now a part of you may be like oh well this is kind of a random question to ask on a first date okay hold on a second with all of these questions use your best judgment on when to ask them if you guys are talking about how to make a quality omelet you're not going to jump and be like hey what's the best piece advice you've ever received that's weird all right and your goal is to not be weird and not be awkward so use your best judgment on when to interject with these questions that's not the scope of this video i'll cover that later let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like i'm just trying to prepare you with some good quality questions to ask in the event that maybe there's a major awkward pause or maybe there's something going on and you just freeze you panic somebody walks by in the background and you're like holy fuck who the hell is that your ex I don't know, there's an earthquake, right? Whatever. So what is the best piece of advice you ever received? The reason I like this is because it lets you know whether they value learning. You know what I mean? Because if they don't have anything or they can't think of anything, that's not necessarily a red flag by any means, it's not. Some people just may have bad memory, maybe they can't recall, maybe it was years ago, maybe it was in an email and they didn't store it in their brain, whatever. But it lets you know whether they like to learn just based off how they answer the question. It's not necessarily about the answer, it's about how they answer it. Because you wanna see, is this somebody that values learning and growing and seeking and is actively seeking advice and feedback. That's how we grow, that's how we learn. That's how we get better at stuff. You know, you're trying to learn another language, you're trying to get better with your confidence and your social skills. So asking them what's the best piece of advice they've ever received lets you access that part of their life that are they trying to grow? Are they trying to learn? Okay. All right, question number seven is again, another compatibility sort of mindset question, if you will, which again, as you can tell, I'm big on these. What are your goals this year? Okay, now me? I have annual goals, daily goals, and weekly goals. Not everybody is like that. I'm not telling you, you need to be like that. I'm not saying that she needs to be like that, but it helps you gauge compatibility. Because if they can't just name off a few right off the bat, but you can, you just gotta be mindful of that because you may be living your life in a way that's much different than her. And you gotta ask if that's okay with you. Are you open to somebody that's maybe not as organized, diligent, disciplined, and ambitious as you? There's nothing wrong with that. I can't answer that for you. You gotta answer that for yourself. But when you ask, what are your goals this year? Again, the, the goal of this video is to ask great quality questions. This is a great question because it's one that you can, she can go in so many directions with this. So for example, let's say, hypothetically, I ask you, what are your goals this year? And you name off one, two, three. Well, then I get to choose, you know, based off your answer of one, two, three, which one I wanna dig deeper in. So I have that power, I have that flexibility right? That will make me a lot more comfortable if I'm getting nervous, especially if you're very attractive or if I'm feeling really connected to you or I'm very inexperienced. I'm going to feel a lot more comfortable knowing that I can sort of guide the conversation how I want, right? So this gives you that opportunity. Ask the question, what are your goals this year? You will not regret it. All right, everyone, those are the seven questions you should ask if you feel nervous when you're around women or you just wanna make a good impression and have a great first date, second date, third date, what have you. If you found this video helpful, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new to the channel. And by the way, if you're socially awkward, you feel like you're anxious, you got a hundred million gazillion thoughts in your head and you wanna just feel better, check out this video where I'm gonna show you the critical questions you should ask yourself if you're socially 
awkward. This video, I don't say this often, can literally change your life because these are ballsy fucking questions and it's gonna help you remember what's important in life. Otherwise, thank you again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take it easy, bye-bye.